Somebody made a comment that, that, that over the last 10 years, we've lost that winning mentality. In fact, we sort of go into games expecting to lose, and I believe that's the mentality of the players. And what they've said is, or the comment was really good, is you know maybe in League One we can start to develop a winning mentality that we haven't had for years because that type of then confidence will then enable you to build for the future. So welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. And unfortunately, it's been just over a week since we found out Birmingham City will be playing League One football next season. And this week's been a bit of a double-edged sword for me. On the one hand, I've really enjoyed the break without Blues uh, stressing me out and ruining my weekend. But on the other hand, it's kind of when the international break happens and you're sort of dying for uh, the football to restart and it feels like there's something missing to some extent. But I'm looking forward to the summer. I'm looking forward to the reset button being pressed and looking forward to seeing what transfers we make as a club. Uh, over the summer. But as we are going to be playing League One football next season, we thought we'd do this video, uh, talk a little bit about the players, about the teams, about the stadiums, and just a general overview of what we might expect as a team next season going into League One. So I'm going to hand it straight over to Dad. And Dad, what are your expectations and thoughts for Birmingham City as we approach the pre-season preparing to go into League One next year? Well, a simple answer is, I just don't know. Uh, last time we was in League One was over 30 years ago, and I do remember it. I do remember it was. But obviously, football's moved on since then, and things have changed. And it is much more competitive league than it was then. So, you know, there's some decent teams in that league in terms of their histories and their, um, you know, a lot of um, sort of ex-prem uh, teams that uh, or teams that have been challenging to get to the Prem for, for many, many years. It ain't going to be easy. I, I know that um, it's easy for us to sit here now and, and, and assume what it's going to be like, but from what I've seen of League One football and what I've looked at, I think it's a much more physical league than uh, the Championship. Uh, and, and that tells me straight away, if we were to put the current squad, thankfully we won't, into that league, we'd struggle in League One. Yeah. Because one thing we mentioned, Matt, wasn't it, throughout the season was our lack of ability to compete and battle yeah. and to have those leaders and, uh, you know, the top players that would get us through these top of games. So it's going to be physical and I think it's going to be a league that's going to be not a walkover, you know. I think uh, Birmingham City are going to be a big club in that league. Uh, we all know that. Uh, and the teams are going to come at us it's because they're, to them it's going to be a, a big, big match for them. Yeah. So straight away I'm thinking... It's not going to be easy. Yeah, I think inevitably the quality is going to go slightly lower, but the physicality goes up. I was watching the playoffs. Uh, it was Peterborough versus Oxford. Uh, just gone at the time of recording. It was last Friday, I think, last Thursday, okay. Friday. Yeah. And there was, you know, there were the odd occasion where it was shinned out and a bit of a 50 pence coin head, but they were physical. They were getting stuck in. It was quite yeah. a... And I thought to myself, if Dembele and Bakuno are turning up to these games, they're going to get booted off the park yeah. they are quite literally yeah. going to get booted off the park so this is why I'm looking forward to the rebuild this summer is because we're going to get hopefully more physical players I know there's a player for Oxford called Carrigan who's been linked with Blues already and the Blues fans on Twitter you've been making me laugh they're already winding up the entire league um, mm -hmm. someone put out a tweet about um, we've just put Oxford for five million so they can, <laughs> they, they can be our feeder club <laughs> <laughs> and the amount of responses and bites they got was absolutely hilarious. Um, but actually, I've got a few colleagues at work who have supported uh, League One teams uh, over the years. And also, I've been doing a bit of research online. And there's a couple of phrases which they've referenced, which I just want to read out. Park the bus, time wasting, and questionable standard of refereeing. So th uh, it was really interesting to get their thoughts because park the bus is apparently a really key one in League One because if a smaller team in League One knows they're going to a bigger team, the general tactic, apparently, I have no idea, by the way, I'm only speculating, I'm going... Uh, 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 going from what people have told me, is they tend to park the bus and you have to sort of really bring the game to them and break them down. So I think the reason why I'm looking forward to the reset button this year is because we need to get more physical players in. We need to be prepared yeah. for League One and we need to get players who are going to be up for the fight, up for the battle and actually are willing to get stuck in for 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, what comes to mind when I just heard you speaking actually was, um, you know, when you're talking about um, the, the ball is sort of a more direct style of play and yeah. much more physical. The game that really comes to mind for me that emphasises, um, you know, where we are at the moment, short and where we need to improve is when we were away to Sheffield Wednesday. They beat us 2-0 and that was, a, again, at one of the crucial games towards the end of the season. Uh, and they literally battered the ball into the box and just because of their physicality, they just they just completely just pushed us aside and you know I, I don't want to go and analyse that game. There's a video on the channel if you want to look at that game, but that emphasised to me where we really need to look at recruitment in terms of bigger players, more physical players, and players that actually are prepared to battle 
Um, because it, it is it is a more direct style of football, and there's a, there's a big tendency on set pieces as well. Again, from what I've read, um, but also I think as well that uh, you know that the fans from away clubs are going to travel to St Andrews in numbers because they want to come to St Andrews at Nighthead Park. Um, and I think you know uh, part of me is actually thinking, well, actually the atmosphere is going to be good because these are going to be teams that are going to be new for, for many of them to come in for well, for many years, coming to St Andrews and so not Nighthead Park. And if obviously I, I believe we will still have really really good crowds. So in a way, in a, in, a, in a strange way, I think the atmosphere is going to be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At St Andrews and Nighthead Park. I mean, not not the stand the fact I don't want to play League One football, but we are where we are, and <laughs> yeah. that's what's coming, whether we like it or not. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think that'll be a, a good positive side to it. Is yeah. that I think there'll be good yeah. atmosphere at the ground. And on the flip side to that, you know, me and you are, are gold away members. There, we're going to get to see some new stadiums. We're going to get to go to sort of you know six thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand sort of seater stadiums. We're not really used to that because what's your average championship capacity? Twenty odd thousand. Yeah. Lo- sort of low- I'd, 20s maybe I'd imagine so yeah. Um, and, yeah and we averagely as I say go to sort of you know 2025 so to go down to 6 10 12 it's going to be a new experience on the road as well so that'll oh, be really I think, interesting I think, I, I think that's one thing a lot of particularly away support are looking forward to is that you know there are because obviously we've been in the championship for 13 years we were, before we got relegated we were the team that were longest in the championship so therefore we've been going effectively to the same grounds year on year yeah. on year um, one thing I think uh, again this is and this is we have, we've had some great comments haven't we met on our videos uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, thank, thank you guys for your um, uh, comments on uh, the way that you uh, to give, tell us what you think and um, uh, and respond to uh, to our videos but there's something that came out as a particular comment I can't remember the person I don't want to name anybody without their permission but uh, somebody made a comment that, that, that over the last 10 years we've lost that winning mentality in fact we sort of go into games expecting to lose and I believe that's the mentality of the players and what they've said is or the comment was really good is you know maybe in League One we can start to develop a winning mentality that we haven't had for years because that type of then confidence will then enable you to build for the future so in a way that could be another positive thing is that uh, you know we are likely to, and I say likely but I'm not, because we don't know what our recruitment is going to be over the summer to win more games and that give us a better mentality moving forward well in the season we've just had, we had a, a recruitment phase and it's like they just looked at ability or they just looked at what they could, uh, you know, their sort of uh, talent and their ability. They didn't look at their character. They didn't look at their personality. Whereas yeah. when we go into League One, we can't just buy players that can score goals. We can't just buy players who can ping it through the channels. They're important. That's nice to have. We need warriors. We need battlers. We need fighters. Because coming back to that comment, Dad, in League One, we will get booted off the park. With, with, this, and, and with this current with, squad, with this which, current we, which we know we're not going to have. 100%, yeah. Because there's so many players, excuse me, out of contract and the lone players would have gone back. But, yeah, if you were to put that squad that we finished the season with into League One, we would get booted all over the place, exactly. as you've mentioned. So yeah. it's a good thing that we've got so many players and, out of contract. And you're exactly right. And I just want to hit this message back again from the previous comment that you made. A lot of League One is lumping it forward, hot long balls into the box, lots of crosses into the box, swarming the keeper. And I saw a um, an interview with Ben Foster. Fair enough, he was talking about Wrexham being in League Two yeah. and he retired early. But he said a lot of Premier League goalkeepers would struggle at that level because of the swarm mentality in the box. He goes, it's yeah. a different style of game. Yeah. League One is, is, a, is a different style of game to the Championship and we need to get prepared for that and we need to get used to that. And I hope our recruitment are ready for that when they decide to bring what kind of players we need back to the squad. Of course, we have a big question mark over our manager um, and we're going to give you know the respect uh, that yeah, particular yeah. area needs. I've been hearing some good stuff on, on social media recently. Who knows? Let's hear what happens. But they need to get the recruitment right and we need to bring in the right the right players for us because that's definitely going to be that style of football we need to get used to. Um, but just on a more lighter note, I mean, a uh, really variety in, in, in stadium sizes, just on a small sort of uh, a small sort of side note, I guess. Uh, you've got something. Uh, these aren't the highest and lowest, I don't think, but it's just an example of the of, of the spectrum in League One. So you've got the Valley, which is twenty seven thousand, and then we go all the way down to Stevenage, which is seven thousand three hundred. So really wide variety uh, of of capacities in this in this league. There's an average of two point two nine goals in every game scored this season in League One. And I thought this was really interesting. What do you think of this, Dad? 40% of goals, 40% are all scored after 70 minutes. Well, I'm impressed with your stats because you've made embarrassed me because uh, <laughs> it, I, I, I don't know any of that. And, you, and, and, you, and you're the stat man. I, know, I can't believe that. I can't <laughs> well, believe yeah, No, that's really impressive. Because what, the thing that 40% of goals after 70 minutes, that showed me is there a fitness 
issue at this level? Is there a consistency issue at this level? Do, do teams tend to drop off after that? There's, yeah, there's lots yeah. of question marks about that stat for me. After 70 after seventy minutes, a lot of goals get scored. So Couldn't we ask that about us this season? Yeah, Could, exactly. Uh, we, we can see a lot of like goals as well. Yeah. Uh, I've got a question for you as well. What, what do you think? And I thought about this. I thought, oh, brilliant. You know, at least one thing as well is that we're not going to get loads of rearranged games. And the, the, I, the, the worst fixtures I hated last season is when we had a Friday fixture, when they moved it to a Friday. I just don't, I, it's a personal view, I just don't like Friday fixtures and we had loads of them last year and the year before actually. I hate um, Friday fixtures. Yeah. So I was thinking, Especially being a Blues fan because it ruined your weekend because the odds are we lost last season didn't we? So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm thinking is is that, so you know, okay, we're maybe going down to League One because there is generally less media coverage that we're not going to get so many rearranged games but you mentioned something to me about the new Sky um, package yeah. that uh, or, or deal where they are going to show more EFL games, including Again, the big one. Please feel free to correct me in the comments, Blues fans or any fans who are watching this. I believe now there's a thousand games being broadcast between Championship and League Two. That is a, I think that's more than double of the amount of games which are going to be shown across Sky Sports, and that and but they're still keeping the two fifteen till four forty five or five forty five blackout on the Saturday so that just inevitably means yeah. there's going to be a significant more midweek games home and away uh, across all championship down to League 2 this so, year so we could end up so having some more rearranged games we're going to have some rearranged games and we're going to I think again until we know what the fixture list is and what it comes out, the speculation is between Championship and League Two, there's going to be a lot more midweek games as well, um, which to me is unfortunate. I'm a classic. I'm only 33, but I'm an old school Saturday, 3 p.m. Oh, kick-off. Me too. me too as well. And I think as well, if, if Sky are choosing fixes in League One, I think we are going to get picked quite a lot. I can think of already one game that will be on there. Wrexham, Wrexham yeah. That's, that's bound to be. That's yeah. bound to be Hollywood coming. versus the NFL, they're calling it already. Are they? Because Tom uh, Brady versus well, uh, 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 Ryan Reynolds. Uh, another, another thing about League One, Matt, um, FA Cup round one. Yeah. We enter at round one. So that will be sort of mid to late November, whereas previously in the Championship you enter in round three, which is January, early January. Yeah. So we will be in the FA Cup earlier. And because we're in round one, we could get drawn against non-league teams uh, or we've got a bigger chance. We could in the third round, but there's not many left by then. Mm -hmm. So chances are we, we could end up against League Two or, or non-league yeah. teams, which, you know, that's been something different to the party, yeah, I suppose, absolutely. doesn't it? So, yeah. you know, it's just the way the way it is as well. I think, I think that comes with the humbling of a relegation. Just being brutally honest, you, yeah. have to, you have to then start in lower rounds of the Cups, you have to play some of the non-league teams. That is the consequence of being relegated, isn't it? Yep. I, 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 that's, the, and that's the rule. of and course, we've got the AFL Trophy yeah. as well. Papa John's. Is it Papa John's? It's had all sorts. And we we, we um, uh, won it as the auto windscreen yeah. shield, didn't we, yeah, years and years ago, went to Wembley. Uh, I saw um, an interview with Barry Fry. He was at the Saturday uh, Birmingham Foundation event uh, where Dugary, Christopher Dugary was the, uh, the other manager. Look great. Uh, yeah, really, really good. But he mentioned about that, and he obviously he's, he's, a, he's he said his best two and a half years at Blues. Uh, it was the best years of his life, yeah. uh, Barry Fry. Uh, and he was talking about that. He said when he went down, they were straight back under him, won the uh, 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 auto wind screens and the thing. He said it was absolutely brilliant. The the, the structure is different now, isn't it? Because it's now you put into groups. So we'll be in a group with three other teams, and some of the Premier League clean teams will have their under twenty ones in there as well. Yeah, just so we don't get Villa in the uh, <laughs> playing their under twenty ones. I can just imagine what the social media will be like yeah. when we're playing. But imagine the atmosphere though; it'd be rocking. Oh, oh, oh yeah, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Blues fans would still be after it, even if it's the under twenty ones. It doesn't I'm matter. I'm only joking. You don't bother. It don't bother no. me at all. But no. I can just imagine asking, "Oh, you're, you're good enough to play your under twenty yeah, ones and stuff like that." Oh, you know, forget all that. But but that's another competition that we'll be in, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and all, and also as well. Um, International breaks as well, because uh, obviously in the Championship, the Championship closes down pretty much the same as the Premier League for international break. It doesn't in League One. Um, so I'm happy about that, because I hate the international breaks. I feel like it really slows the momentum down personally. I, and I, I don't like the break from football, but I'm quite happy that we get to play through the uh, international break. Uh, th there is, um, it depends, obviously. We, we don't know what's going to happen with our squad in the summer, because we have got some current internationals in that squad. Um, so the EFL rules say if you've got three or more, in, if you're in League One, and three or more of your players are called up for international duty, you can... Okay. call for a postponement um, but that depends on whether our current internationals will stay with us I'm talking lots of Bielek Bakuna, uh, Bakuna Paik uh, Miyoshi Jordan James yes exactly so so it depends on what happens with those type of players we'll determine whether or not but so the international breaks we will potentially play through them which again I agree with you because I hate the international breaks yeah, it just slows it down doesn't it yeah but that's, that's another consequence yeah. of League One and an, 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 another biggie for me while we're on this sort of tread is we don't abide by FFP anymore but we abide by the salary cost management protocol uh, which means just to read it out so I don't get it wrong everyone a uh, maximum of 60% of the club's turnover may be spent on a player's wages with sanctions being applied in the form of a transfer embargo so you have up to a 
maximum of 60% of the club's turnover, which that there's helps. A, there's a bit more flexibility as well in terms of okay. finances. Well, something else I'll read out in relation to that. Donations to the clubs from owners are included as turnover or as an injection of equity uh, and a funds raised from the sale of players. So, so basically what they're saying is, is you know, we're not under the same strict criteria in terms of... Um, of um, you know the finances in relation to what's in the championship, but there is a different structure and different set of rules. So there is a framework there we still have to follow. Um, so we just the way the club are and the way that they are increasing um, you know uh, income into the club. Uh, I think that's going to be okay in terms of how we how we comply with those as well. Um, yeah, and the only thing I've got which I which I, which I wasn't even <laughs> aware of and I should have been as well. Goal line technology. I'll read this out as well. Remarkably, the only matches in League One and League Two which are uh, afforded goal line technology are the playoffs. Um, that's despite the fact that Blues at St Andrews have been able to call on technology for the entirety of their time in the Championship. This will be the first season's introduction of Hawkeye, which is a goal line thing. Uh, the Blues won't benefit from it. I didn't even know we had Hawkeye I didn't at St Andrews. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't but, know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so that it would. I think what happens with Hawkeye is that we. Don't, it's not like a, it's not like VAR where you get a stop and then if you, and you get uh, something yeah, through yeah. I think the referees have got buzzers on their arms. So if the ball was to go over the line, they get a buzz or something like it's. Again, correct oh. me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's something like that. So I don't think it's a, a VAR style of right. technology. Because when you said Hawkeye then, that reminded me of the tennis. You yeah, know, but it's the same, it's you know, the same thing. Yeah, because yeah. you know they can challenge the tennis yeah. and that you yeah, get yeah. a picture of the ball over the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's, but I wasn't aware of that. And that, that. That's only through research that I found out that uh, we, we have got that technology and we had it all in the... Uh, okay. in the ah. I, th I think it's pretty simple in as much as uh, at the bottom of the goalpost there's a beam. Yeah, yeah. I believe that's what happens. If the, the whole of the ball crosses over it, I think the, the the referee will get a buzz on his arm or something. Oh, they could have, they could have done that with the England Germany game, couldn't they? That's <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, how many years you're talking about going? Different by, podcast yeah. for a different time, I guess. Yeah. But um, and, and I just want to highlight some um, again. You know, the rumors are circling. Uh, there's a couple of players on social media which not Blues haven't been linked with, but there's been a couple of players in League One which Blues fans have gone. Oh, he'd be okay. I think he'd add something. And just to throw a few names out there, Alfie May. He plays for Charlton. He was the top scorer in League One last season with 23 goals. So that's quite interesting. Uh, Cameron Brannigan from uh, Oxford. He's the guy in the playoffs at the moment. Scored the penalty to see, to see him through to the final. Um, Karamako Dembele from Blackpool. Really good player. He's the guy who started at Celtic at 16, I believe. Really, okay. really young kid. And then uh, Poku from Peterborough as well. He's another one who... Uh, not, not linked with Blues, as I say. Not linked with Blues. Just rumours uh, in the Twitter sphere, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and the three top goal scorers for League One this year were Alfie Chang, Charlton, 23 goals. Colby Alfie May. Alfie May. Alfie, sorry, Alfie May. Yeah. Or did I say Alfie Chang? Yeah. He's our yeah. player, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Alfie May, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Colby Bishop, Portsmouth, 21 goals. And Jamie Reid for Stephen, 18 goals. So yeah. they're, they're the three top goal scorers this year. I think that's another reality of League One is it's changed the type of players we're going to need to look at. You know, I think that so obviously the when recruiting, they can try and sell the vision or as they call it, the project to the players. So we, we have got the ability to encourage, you know, probably the best players, uh, you know, to come to us at this level. The thing is, the players you've mentioned, of course, are, again, they're examples of players that would suit the, the league really, really well. But, of course, it depends on their yeah. contract situation, their availability and all that type of thing. And I think we're going to see a massive um, turnaround yeah. um, of uh, players anyway. Final, uh, a final question for you. I'm going to put you on the spot just before we finish. B uh, Birmingham City, League One next season, are we going to bounce straight back up? Yeah, I think so. I, I'm, 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 I'm pretty certain we will. Um, that, that was a fast answer. I thought you were going to go, mm, mm, no, but no, no, you're straight back up. No, I think, I think it's because yeah, the only confidence I've got is because of our owners. And uh, I know that, uh, I think that the relegation is going to be a massive wake up call for them. And I think that they will be analysing everything. I, I don't know this for certain, but I'm, I'm, I'm just envisioning there's so much going on behind the scenes at the moment in terms of all sorts of things, particularly in terms of recruitment. What do we need to, I can imagine Tom Wagner, what have we got to do now? Tell me what we need to do to get out of this league and get back into the championship. Yeah. So, um, I and, he, never... and, he, and he will provide those resources. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what will happen is, is that, um, I think there's going to be such a turnover of players that it's going to take us a couple of weeks or to adjust to that league uh, because it's going to be a brand yeah. new team virtually. There will be some players there. Uh, and also um, the style of play is very, very different. Uh, so I think that we'll we'll make that transition, and I think we'll over the course of the season, I think the quality uh, will allow yeah. us to be right at the top end. I, th I, th I do think we'll come straight back. I think Lee, if you look at Leeds and Southampton this season, getting dropped from the Premier League to the Championship, it took them a couple of weeks and months to get going. Yes. sometimes a drop can take you a couple of months to get going because yeah. we're going to have such a big turnover. I don't want the fans to forget this. It's going to take time for this team to gel. 
Martial, no matter who we bring in, we still need clarity on the manager situation. There's a lot of things that we need to know and get right. Yeah. And when that jowls, I'm with you. I think we will come back up. But don't be disalarmed or you know alarmed if we have a slow start because we're going to no. be adapting to the league. Te- the team's going to have time to gel, and I think we will come into it. And I'm, I'm with you. I think we're going to bounce straight. Back I do as well. Time. And just just one final uh, point for me as well. You know, it, it won't be easy. We know that. No, it's, no, it's no, a bra- no. It's a brand new league. There's some teams there. They're very competitive in that league. It won't be easy, but. Birmingham City don't do easy. <laughs> we just don't do we. So uh, I, I think we'll we'll find a way and we will get back into the championship. But uh, yeah. it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a journey. It's worth clarifying. Sunderland spent four years down there. Portsmouth have spent ten years down there. Derby spent two or three years. You know some big teams. Ipswich were, were down there a few years. Ipswich are down there. So yeah. there's, there's been teams yeah. down there who have struggled to get out. So we're not going down there saying no. We're going to walk the league. We're just being pragmatic about the money we're going to have, the owners that we have, and the. You know, if Mowbray does come back, I think he's going to be the perfect man to bounce his straight back up. Yeah, right. And obviously, uh, everything that we're talking about now hinges on recruitment as well. 100%. Need to get that right. Yeah. So, you've just heard our opinions on League One next season. But as always, Blues fans, we'd love to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Are you apprehensive about League One? Are you excited about League One? It's only been a week, but are you already missing the football? Or are you quite enjoying enjoying sorry this warmer weather and a little bit of a break? Please let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you did like this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And please check us out on our other social media channels over on X and on Instagram. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content all about Birmingham City. And me and dad will see you on the next video.